Throughout her experience as a paranormal investigator, Amy Bruni has learned that food has the power to bring the dead back to life. That's why she is sharing recipes and stories from America's most legendary haunted places in her new cookbook, Food to Die For. And Amy joins us in studio once again this morning to discuss what locations inspired her to write the book. Good morning, welcome Hi, back. Thanks for having me. It's so nice to see you again here in studio. Now, this is exciting. It's always fun when we talk to you because you do so many cool things, but this is such a labor of love that you've been doing. Tell us about the cookbook. You've been working on it for years. Yeah, this was about three years in the making. Uh, you know, I just, I started noticing when we visited so many locations that a lot of them had food associated with them. That's Some crazy. of them were old inns or taverns or restaurants old you know institutions like jails and whatnot they had recipes and so I was like what if I just put these all together in a book that's, <laughs> so here it is <laughs> that is incredible and it's such a good idea because people love stuff like this of mm -hmm. course but what a great idea because you aren't just you know a fan of the paranormal you are there you're experiencing it so how did you go about choosing the places that you were going to include in the book there's lots of them yeah there are almost 60 locations featured in the book and so I basically I started with some locals really I was inspired by Lizzie Borden's meatloaf mm. recipe and so then just like as I went back kind of through my you know just my research over the years I just started kind of finding recipes associated with places that I had actually investigated yeah. and then I looked at it on like a US map and I was like okay what areas are not represented here okay. and then I started digging into places I hadn't even been yet so it was you know I got to learn a lot in the process and make a lot of weird food <laughs> and I love that you said you so let's talk about how you actually found the recipes and then you had to test the recipes yes so we tested every single recipe wow. in the book and so I mean the recipes run the gamut I would say probably 75 to 80 percent of them are actually like delicious wonderful things you want to yeah. make some of them are very historical you know you have things like neutral from eastern state penitentiary or hard tack like not necessarily things that you would want to make per se maybe just to experience them once but uh but yeah it's it was quite an adventure making all of those things in our kitchen and i know that you mentioned that there are some local places i know lizzie borden you said was one white horse tavern i think yes. was another one what are some of the places people might recognize uh just kind of by flipping through well so a big one is Rough Point in Newport. Uh, it's actually Mrs. Goody's pecan pie, which was like you know, Doris mm. Duke's favorite pecan mm. pie is in there. Um, and obviously, we talked about the Lizzie Borden house is a big one. Um, White Horse Tavern is local. And then I was trying to think what other places that are local, but they're just very large haunted locations. Yeah. Um, Eastern State Penitentiary I brought up, but uh, and then some places in Florida and I mean we went all over the place Savannah New Orleans it, it was I, a lot I was flipping through the book which by the way is gorgeous and there are so many different locations a lot of hotels that people yes. might recognize like the Omni from oh. people around here a lot of people know the New Hampshire Omni which is such a beautiful hotel and I know that you have a great history with that hotel as well yeah the Mount Washington is near and dear to my heart it's actually fitting it's the very first recipe in the book and when I went to them I was like what recipe do you want to provide for this yeah they were so into to it and they actually gave us like their special sausage that they make in-house every morning for breakfast that I they've been making that. for years and years and that's so that's incredible yeah, yeah. Uh, that's always a great place to visit so now maybe you can make that and go visit too right. but like I said the book is beautiful tell us more about the production of making a cookbook I mean it's just it's visually stunning just to have on a coffee table or in your kitchen on display yeah so this actually like I cannot take any credit for those photos <laughs> and the food styling like I gave them my vision which I think I told them I wanted like a gothy colonial witchy mm -hmm. look to it <laughs> and I gave them like a little vision board they spent five days in studio in Tennessee taking like photos of wow. these recipes and food styling and I mean there was a whole team behind it and I was getting the dailies every night and I was just like oh my gosh tears these are just such beautiful so good. photos so it's so good that part of it I just I am in awe of the work they do. It is. It's very beautiful. <laughs> and people can actually see it in person, too, because you have a local event tomorrow. Yeah, so tomorrow in Newport at the Fifth Element from 5 to 7, I will be doing a book signing. So I think they have some spooky drink specials happening and stuff. And so it'll be a fun, like, kickoff launch yeah. party because it officially releases tomorrow. Perfect. And it's so beautiful. Congratulations. Thank it's you. so 
nice to have you back here, and I can't wait to flip through more. I saw there was a Bloody Mary recipe. That's a good one. I it's always strong. like those. <laughs> I, could, I could start there. That's an easy one. Well, the, as Amy said, the book is officially on sale tomorrow. You can purchase Food to Die For starting then, and I've posted a link at roadshow.com if you'd like to know more.